Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to The Hunter and the Beast, where I'm just feeling absolutely great about our position. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about our position. How good our position really is depends on whether or not these lizards are ever going to figure out how to get off of their boat. How did they even... Like, if they don't understand how the boat works, how did they get on there? It actually is kind of like floating around inside my city. I kind of wonder if the bug here is that they were able to move just close enough to not get on the beach, and now because they're in the city zone of control, they can't move anymore, or what's going on with that? Um, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm perfectly fine with them being trapped there forever. So what is the big important move today? The big important move today is let's wipe out these guys, right? Let's see, they have the Monolith of the Fallen Gods and the Ziggurat of Dawn, so they, they don't have a major settlement. Uh, their garrisons are pretty large, but Norskin minor settlements can't have walls. They, they just don't believe in walls. So these, I mean, these might be interesting battles. We will probably get to apply our steam tank a whole lot more. My biggest concern here is that we're going to leave the Maku Peaks and it's immediately going to be overrun by Skaven rebels. If that happens, it's not the end of the world. I mean, if we, if we lose it, we lose it <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, we can just come and take it back. But yeah, I think I think we got to deal with this first because these guys are going to declare war on us at some point. It's going to be a big pain in the butt. Let's just go and handle it. Plus, this puts us adjacent. This puts us right on the ocean over here in case these guys do manage to get out of the boat and take over Grey Rock Point. We'll be in a position to take it back. And you are pretty much just getting us into trouble. So the last war, or the last defenders and the Kemri are at war. Wherever one of those groups is, the other one is also nearby. I have no idea what this glowy light that we can see through the mist is, but I'm not sure that we want to run Nussbacker any deeper inland. I think we kind of want him to circle back around and maybe rejoin us and actually cast a spell before the end of the campaign. So let's have him move this way. We'll, we'll just scout the uh, the coast over here. And then we'll get him back in the water. And aside from that, I don't think we have anything else of terrible import to do. Uh, all of our trade agreements and everything, there's no, like, negotiation. Yeah, I think we're all set. The Empire's mostly running itself at this point. Uh, we still have to... What do we have to do for you? We have to construct an Emerald Pools. I don't know what that is. Hold on a second. We should probably try to figure that out. Uh, give me... The building browser. What the hell is an emerald pool? Because that does not sound like a building that uh, that we would build. That sounds like some lizard man stuff. The emerald pools might be the name of a, uh, a unique landmark structure that is only in one place, and probably somebody has told me what it is in the comments of a previous episode, and I uh, did not read them yet. So, sorry about that. Uh, unfortunately, there's not the in-game encyclopedia is not so good. You know what? I'm gonna take a very unorthodox step here, and I'm just gonna uh, Google real quick: Total War Warhammer Emerald Pools. On camera, this is this is professionalism right here. It is in fact a special landmark building in Itza. Oh, that's inconvenient. Uh, Itza is down here somewhere <laughs> so that's gonna okay well that's off the table <laughs> okay that's that's fine she's uh she's done developing for the for the moment honestly she was already very good it's not a big problem i'm just gonna like double verify this here real quick so let's <laughs> let's look at a different warhammer wiki Oh, see, this says several miles, several hundred miles to the... I mean, this is not about the Warhammer video game. That's that's some uh, some Warhammer fantasy lore nonsense. Uh, no military alliances, thank you. Please don't stop the cycling of the turns. I really, really need a lot of these turns to pass. So notice that we are we are rated as more powerful than Hexawaddle. We're also uh, rated as way more powerful than Itza. That's interesting. I wonder if the Skaven have just taken over every part of the southern jungle that's kind of crazy because uh, i think i've mentioned probably at this point that all of the computer versus computer combat is handled by auto resolve and in my experience auto resolve hates skaven units and loves sauruses so uh my experience with the jungle has mostly been that all of the skaven get killed it's 
interesting to see something else happening here. Something else happening in a pretty serious way. And I think it's good for us. Uh, not, not in the sense that the Skaven are going to be friendly to us or anything, but it's just way more fun to fight Skaven than it is to fight Lizardmen. The battle part. Sorry, the battle part of fighting Skaven is fun. The part where Skaven can move underground and trap your units and run away from you very effectively is less fun. Okay, we're going to get some more reinforcements with our uh, with our next thing. That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm down with that. This is going to be a Skaven settlement, right? I'm not even going to check. We know it's a Skaven settlement. Clan Moors is like right there. What is this? Are those High Elves? What are you guys doing down here? Tor Elasor. Oh, this is the first time we're encountering this faction, so these are not elves from Ulthuan. They must they must start down here somewhere. Weird. Well, uh, can we have a chat with you? In the name of the king. Oh, that's exactly what I was hoping to see, is that they have a port and that we can trade with them. Okay, cool. They are at war with another elf faction, but not one that we're familiar with. Okay, even more trade income. Uh, Andreas is doing some fine, fine work here. It may not seem like he's had a huge effect on our game, but honestly, uh, without him, we would not have almost any of our trade agreements, and it's hard to argue with the the value, the amount of money that he is bringing in. So do we want to just go for them? Are you at war with them? You are not at war with them anymore. In fact... Are they at war with anyone at this point? They might still be at war with the Lizardmen, and we've taken all of that pressure off of them. Take what's theirs. Yep, that is the case. They are rated as only being slightly weaker than we are. But they're also... they hate us. So a war with them is not necessarily going to be an easy thing. But it's likely that if we leave unprotected territory near them, they're going to attack it. So, all right. Here's my here's my thinking. Uh, first of all, let's level up our hero, and then we're gonna run for Grey Rock Point. Not because we need to defend Grey Rock Point from the lizards, because I don't think we do, but because you know what? Maybe this is a bad idea. I was gonna say because we could run from Grey Rock Point to the Ziggurat and pressure them from two sides, but that's not actually true necessarily with these lizard men in the water here. I'm not sure that we will be able to get out of the port. Only the dedicated. It sure looks like they don't have an army defending the monolith though. Can we see what the garrison is from here? Ice trolls, normal trolls, some dogs, a great big mammoth, a bunch of marauder types. So marauder champions are pretty scary. They're shielded, they're heavily armored, they're actually very good fighters. You can see 53 melee defense is actually very high, uh, 36 melee attack is totally fine, quite a bit of strength. But the rest of these dudes, the, the normal marauders, are actually really easy to take down and not, not much of a threat to us. I think we can take this. And they, they don't have anything that is the equal of our, uh, our steam tank. I think we should, we should be able to, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe we can just auto-resolve it? I'm just gonna auto-resolve it, because that bar is pretty far to the side there. Honestly, this is probably more damage than we would have taken if I did it manually, but this will save us some real-world time. Ooh, check out that armor. 10% flat damage reduction and another 10% on physical? Uh oh retaliation. Stuff's happening. Uh, okay, so what do we need? Do we need a second steam tank? Well, we don't need a second steam tank, but do I want a second steam tank? That second army doesn't really have much in the way of artillery, and I do love some artillery. We also don't have any cavalry at all between the two armies, and maybe that's a thing worth fixing. It's just, it's so hard to turn down a steam tank. And by hard, I mean I can't. I can't turn down a steam tank. Okay, our relentless aggressions have caused hostility to rise. To give us some more hand gunners. Okay. Marcus Wolfhart is fearless. I'd say that, that feels pretty true. Also, he is the executioner. So, we can now see the army that waits for us at the Ziggurat of Dawn. Hold on, let's, let's look at that in a second. First, 
Let's build something here at this monolith. Uh, in the interest of continuing to make money, we could just go for a weaving house. Looks like we're pretty okay on public order here, certainly at least for the moment. So we don't necessarily need a tap room. Paved roads are fine. It only affects the region of the city, not the whole province of the city, which makes it kind of not great here at the monolith, because once we're done with this conquering, we'll probably never set foot in this area again. Paved roads at Hexwaddle would be a thing worth having. Uh, so is it just... No, it's it's one of these. That's right. I was going to use a minor settlement slot for a blacksmith. And we should probably keep upgrading these walls. I want Hexawaddle to be a fortress. Alright, so what are we looking at here? Never mind. Can't tell. Ziggurat of the Dawn does not have a very impressive garrison. Pretty eager to be able to get through that. Alright, we finished our colonial factors. Do we want... Warhorse buffs followed by supply wagons, which is actually very good. Or do we want... Ooh, plus two untainted faction wide is actually pretty cool. Invite some clergy of Sigmar, Sigmar into our cities. Manorialism is fine. It's not... Yeah, I'm not excited about that, obviously. Maybe this is a good time for some war machines. Faster reloads, more ammunition, more damage... And additional missile resistance for steam tanks and war wagons. I'm not terribly into this. I guess if we're going to be fighting a lot of Skaven, this becomes better. Because the Skaven are very missile heavy. I do like supply wagons. But it, like as powerful as it is, it's also the case that the use of it is somewhat limited. We won't need it, we won't need it all that often. Let's start picking up this stuff. Our war machines are becoming a bigger and bigger part of what we do. Yeah, we're definitely going to recruit uh, <laughs> some siege engines here. Okay, well, let's see how the uh, how the Norskins respond here. My suspicion is they're going to just sit there in the ziggurat and not uh, not come after us. Kothik was destroyed. That's a shame. Actually, no, that doesn't matter. Itza was folded into Hexawaddle. So Itza was completely certain that they would be destroyed. And they gave themselves over to Hexawaddle, which is fine for us. That doesn't make any any difference at all. Ooh, the orcs are massing up in a very serious way. We gotta... If we're gonna deal with this Norskin thing, we gotta get it dealt with quickly. I mean, Hexawaddle will stand for a couple of turns against Siege. It'll give Marcus time to return, but I'd really love it if we could... Uh, if we could just be in position to ambush the orcs as they approach. Also, if Tor Elisor is just a minor elf faction living down in the jungle here, I'm kind of surprised they're still alive. I wonder if they've been cutting deals with the Skaven. Oh, it begins... See that's unfortunate. Oh, they finally came out of the uh, out of the ocean to siege the city. Okay. The hunt concludes. Once the area surrounding the emerald pools was secured, you helped Kalara construct her shrine to Isha, right upon the banks of its glowing Viridian waters. I didn't. I didn't do that. Uh, she then spent several days praying at the newly built sanctum, beseeching the goddess to fulfill her promise to free Atherin's soul from its eternal reincarnation. When Kalara finally emerged, it was clear that her prayers had been answered. Her usual sorrowful demeanor had vanished, for Isha had granted her the lover's forgiveness and arranged for Atherin's soul to progress into the afterlife, thus freeing Kalara from her eternal hunt. That's, uh, that's some dramatic shit. Clara thanked you profoundly for your help, and promised that as long as she was needed, she would continue fighting alongside the expedition. So I guess somebody else built the Emerald Pools? It didn't say I had to build it, it just said it had to be built. She has become even more badass. She's got another sweet bombardment ability. Pretty happy to see that. So, we have a, we have a choice here. Well, hold on. Let's do this part first, because th this should be relatively easy. The lizard men are severely outnumbered here. Oh, their units aren't even good. Equipment check. Okay, let's grab the steam tank. Do I want 
Both the units of mortars. Do we want a cannon? Oh, hold on. Well, let's get the steam tank. We also have the regiments of renown to consider because there's some there's some wild stuff in here, like the Templehof Luminarch. We haven't had the chance to play with a Luminarch yet. That said, this army might spend a lot of time back playing defense. It's not exactly where I want my Templehof 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 Luminarch to be. Let's grab. We have six slots left in the army, and we I mean, we don't have infinite money. Obviously, a lot of our money is, um, a lot of our income is gone right now because our capital is under siege. We'll deal with it. If we take, like, these two guys on... And then we grab, we grab some more of these units because they don't actually cost anything to recruit. Uh... Grenade, grenade launcher outriders I haven't actually gotten to use very much. I don't think we want to pull them in for this conflict because the enemy actually does have a lot of air units. I know this is kind of boring, or, or rather this is like the composition we're running everywhere else too, but I really, really like mortars. So right now this army has six, uh, six ranged units. Do we want more ranged? How many, how many hand gunners do we actually need? Let's take these guys on and then do it like that. That might be overkill. Yes. Proceed. All right, so pressed between the garrison of Grey Rock Point and these guys, I don't think these lizard men stand much of a chance. All yeah, we can, we can auto resolve a battle that is that much in our favor. Bring out the nooses. This would have been really grim for them because they have almost no sources. The Skaven are or the uh, Skinks are going to get just torn apart by small arms fire, and as soon as these Pterodons get anywhere near us, they're going to get shredded. The idea that any of the units of Pterodons were able to get a dozen kills just seems wild to me. All right, so we got ourselves some new followers. Income from all buildings plus one percent. <laughs> what do peasants know about money? All right, let's. Stop off inside Grey Rock Point for a turn, get ourselves some replenishment. Uh, and we're gonna grab... I know I was talking about Lightning Strike, and Lightning Strike is important, but we don't need it right at this moment, and I'm thinking that log uh, Logistician might be more valuable to us. Yeah. Lightning Strike battles are really powerful in the situation that they're they're good in, but this is more broadly useful. So we're going to hang out in Grey Rock Point for one turn, and then after that we're immediately a threat to the Ziggurat. Okay, so down here, we have a decision. We could push over here to attack Hexo uh, attack the army attacking Hexoatl. I don't think these orcs are actually going to be able to take Hexoatl from us. Orc armies are actually not great at sieges. Uh, in my opinion, if they have time to build up enough siege towers and you can get like some black orcs straight up on the wall, that that can be a thing that's hard to deal with. But we could trust Hexawaddle's defenses to hold and just go over here and lay a, lay an ambush. My suspicion is as soon as it looks like the monolith, the monolith of the fallen gods is empty, we're going to see this army charge after it. If we go after the orcs, probably we are seeding the monolith back to Skiggy. But we could just, like, move over to here, go into ambush mode, and see if they'll wander into us. Monster Hunter. I kind of like that idea. Alright, what do we need to do with you? I guess let's finish off Tempered Rigor. It's another five points of attack and defense. She is, like, awesome now. Her stats are incredible. What armor is she wearing? Glittering Scales? Hold on, what, what armor is this guy wearing? He's got the old armor of fortune on. Let's swap his armor to that fancy new stuff we found. Which is just like, it's it's similar, but it's the next rarity up. And then we're going to swap that green armor onto Kalara, because she actually does a lot of fighting. Although, honestly, the glittering scales are pretty powerful. It's not it's not as good for her as the green armor would be, but this is way better for when like we're using her to flank charge somebody and she's she's applying a melee attack debuff that is helping to protect the rest of our melee units and yeah, maybe we keep that on her well then who wants this fancy green armor because it's actually pretty good 
What are you wearing? Oh, that's also pretty good. What does the What's Witch Hunter general? have on? Okay, we'll give him this stuff. He hasn't, he hasn't been getting a lot of melee combats, but that doesn't mean he won't. I guess we can't reach them this turn anyway. Maybe the right play is, like, move down to here. Every last beast. Yep, and our, our area of effect is covering the entire entrance to the monolith. We'll go into ambush mode right there, in the middle of the road where we have a very high ambush success chance due to all of our stacked up nonsense. And if the Norskins come after the Monolith, we'll be able to catch them out. And if they don't, we should have the movement necessary to make a Taxawaddle next turn, I think. The corpses. Okay, that's just how Andreas starts conversations. Like, hey, Andy, buddy, how's it going? The corpses. Oh, yeah, cool, great. Is no. And that's why he doesn't have a lot of close friends. All right. So we don't have a lot else to do here. We're, uh, you know, we should probably turn off taxation at the Maku Peaks because we're hardly making any money. Let's see if we can get this place built up enough to survive a rebellion, at least temporarily. If we are able to crush Skeggy here, we can have our secondary army grab the Ziggurat while this army pushes west and then hopefully we can have them in position to catch these dudes as they sail north fingers crossed so every time we hit maximum hostility one stack of these guys is going to spawn it seems like and they don't always spawn with very intimidating units you know what would be really cool i think if we could convince the high elves to come over here somehow I don't know how we would do that, but a lot of them are very powerful. I guess we don't really want them over here. We want them fighting the Dark Elves, so the Dark Elves are too busy to declare war on my northern front. Because if they decided to do that, we don't really have forces in position to make that uh, not work for them. Like I I really can't defend myself up there. Approach us, friend, and make your offer. What is this? You would like a military alliance. Absolutely not. I'd take a defensive alliance with them. Hmm, interesting. I wonder where those guys are going. They stopped just short of the ambush. Official word is they didn't see me. Like, it doesn't say ambush foiled. They just happened to stop just short of the ambush. All right. Well, I mean, oh shoot, I, I forgot. When you give a when you give an army a land army orders, they almost never. They are not usually willing to get in the water. You have to get them in the water before you declare the order. Okay, we still had enough movement to get the job done. All right. So we control the province. The Norskan army no longer has anywhere to get supplies from, so they're suffering serious attrition damage. And we are... Ooh, what is this? The Beacon of Dawn. By dawn's early light, does it call for the uh, to the bosom of the Old Ones for their protection and illumination? That's... Hmm, that's fine. Um, that'll help keep the area uncorrupted, at least. What do we need here? I guess the first thing we should probably build is a guardhouse, because that Lizardman army is on the way. I don't think they'll be able to be in a position to attack us on this coming turn. And we'll be back at full health by the time they get over here. This actually seems like an okay time to take Lightning Strike, because we don't need the extra replenishment right now. Now the question is, do we just jump these guys? Holy crap, their army's entirely made of Marauder Champions. And they have some Marauder Horse Masters. These guys are annoying. Um, sorry, they're annoying for certain forces. We have enough ranged attacks that we could just shoot them. But they're very fast-moving javelin throwers. They can be really hard to deal with if you're uh, if you're light on, on missile weapons. Marcus Wolfhard. I think we probably have to just take these dudes Change down. This is, this is our moment. Let's get the job the done. Uses. And then Hexawaddle is just going to have to find a way to survive. I've got your backs, so watch my... 
I am definitely worried about the Marauder Champions. They are a fair bit tougher than most of the enemies that we have had to fight so far. They will definitely defeat our melee troops in combat pretty easily. But we do have a lot of... Um, and, and they'll be good against the Huntsmen. Because they're heavily armored, but, but without being large. So we don't get any of that fancy arrow bonus. But we do have a steam tank. We do have a rocket battery. Our plan is just going to have to be kill them before they get close. They also have a handful of units of Berserkers over here, which are like exactly what you would think they are from the name. Super high damage, very, uh, very killy, but also pretty fragile. So in this case, because we have a massive advantage uh, in range, we probably don't want a Vanguard deploy right on top of them. We want to take an advantageous side position. I guess let's uh, let's gamble. Ten's not a, ten's not a ton of magic to start with. Okay, that was not bad. We have no gunpowder units. Oh, sorry, that's not true. We have a hero and also the steam tank needs direct line of sight to fire. We could play up here and just fire down the hill at them, but I really, I want them to have to run as long as possible to get up to, get up to us. Maybe we start over here? I'm just thinking if we start over here, we're going to have to have somebody in a forward position to spot them, and we don't... We have some people with stock, but we don't have anybody with stock who's also fast, and I'm worried that uh, they might get ridden down by the Horse Masters. Then again, the Horse Masters aren't super powerful. We can pull our mortars back to, like, here, and still have range to start shooting immediately. Spot us the target. Have you guys, like... Right here, I guess I am I am allowing an approach through the trees over on this side, which is not great. But I really want to make sure that we have the maximum amount of time to fire on them as they approach. I mean we can we can set the steam tank up here. Honestly, along with the dwarf hero. And then maybe the dwarf tier dwarf hero should just stay back to this so that his uh accuracy aura can affect the the mortars. Probably. The mortars are notoriously inaccurate if you don't do something. The mage back here in the safety pocket. And... You two can start up. You just have to be a little bit more careful than usual. So I'll put a unit of halberds, like, here... And the other oh, unit of halberds over here. Try to be ready for the side push. I think this is the best we're going to do. We can probably keep the paladin back in reserve, sort of in the middle. He's not going to be able, uh, not going to be of much value during the early part of the fight here. That's a real strange place for that rocket battery. Does the rocket battery have... Okay, it has range. And it fires in an arc. That'll work. We may end up having to pull the, the halberds around quickly. Like, I'm really not... As far as damage to these heroes goes, I'm really not too worried about the Horse Masters. You guys are tough enough to defend themselves, I think. This is, this is an okay start. So... Uh, one place where... These guys are going to be a little bit weak is morale. If we can damage their morale enough, we can mess them up pretty bad. Let's try our new spell right away. So wait, what is it? Strong versus multiple combatants. Enemies hit by the bombardment are slowed. Medium strike area. It doesn't say whether it's affected by armor or how much it's affected by armor. And one thing, one piece of information that is never included on the tooltips for these is the, um, the wind-up time, which is frustrating because, like, I don't know how much to lead by here. Let's try dropping it right there. Hoping that they'll walk forward a little bit and we'll get a bunch of guys with it. Let's try that thing out. I mean, we may as well throw... Yeah, we may as well throw the Executioner out against Lost Erickson of the Cull. Oh, he's on a horse. Okay, so first of all, important to remember, they do in fact have one powerful melee unit, or one powerful cavalry unit, but also... This uh, is good against large combatants and good against armor. 
This should do some real work here. Let's hope that we can get that off. Okay, so that has a pretty short initial wind-up. Oh, wow! And then it's amazing. And then it's amazing after that short initial wind-up. This is so cool, the two of them just like standing at the f at the front lines of every battle like this. Alright, fall back while fighting. Steam tank's got a clean shot. If these guys chase us up the hill, they're in for a real problem. <laughs> yep, they got an arrow range, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> Look at that! Okay, hold on. We have... Let's make sure that these are in guard mode. Uh, you guys too. I think we have artillery firing at non-optimal targets. Let's try to make sure that we're going deep on the clumped up dangerous enemies. Uh, we don't need to be shooting at the Marauder Horsemen. I mean, this clump of Marauder Champions is a pretty obvious target, but it's also taken a lot of damage already. Make sure we're working, working the angles here. And we might want to throw out a Dwellers Below pretty soon. This spell has a little bit of wind-up time. We want to make sure we, we catch somebody in it as they approach, because it really does slow enemies down. We want to keep their formation as broken up as possible. And then the steam tank can just keep shooting at kind of whoever, for the moment. Okay, so they paid the price on that one. Alright, that's working out. Our cooldowns are just a little bit too long. Let's see if I can get my second thing off before they make contact with us. Fire it. Fire it, Marcus. Okay. He's not gonna do it. Wow! He just got meleeed a single time for a third of his health. Get behind the spears, buddy. Buffs for everyone. Okay. Hellstorm rocket battery uh, took my orders a little bit too literally and ignored the guard mode that we put them on. I always find that frustrating. Sometimes your guys just do that. They just decide, eh, that order you gave me, I don't like it. That's not good enough for me. Okay, the horses are out of the battle. We don't have to be terribly careful with our halberds, and we have this building to prevent too much of a flank, so I think we can, we can kind of step up and spread out and prepare for that. Uh, this war wagon over here. Let's focus on these guys. Try to fire at the enemies who are a little bit further back. And where does our paladin go? I guess maybe the smart money is over here. Let's throw the paladin this way so that we can wipe out all of the enemies on this side and then just fold this flank around the others. I think that's a reasonable way to do this. Okay, uh, also, I should have done this earlier, but this will be a fine time for some quick ballistics calibration. Throw an entrenchment on these dudes. And the arrow guys should really focus on the berserkers. Let's try to cut these berserkers down. The arrows are going to do a lot more damage there than they are against the champions, that's for sure. She is about to have the second charge of this thing, and then after we fire this, she may have to convert into melee mode. Yeah, let's let's get her in there. We need her mixing it up. Get in there. You can see the steam tank, I can just kind of leave it forward. It's not invulnerable, but it takes damage slowly enough. It'll it'll bog things down pretty hard for a while. And let's get you over here. 
All right. So their Lord is all up in our line. I would love to punish him for this. Also, I totally forgot to cast the thing. Let's, um, let's throw out some important spells. First of all, defense buffs for everybody. Also, of course, remember all of the healing that we're getting from doing this. Uh, you should probably focus this way, actually, and then we're going to need to cast some damage spells over here to make sure this front works. Now, the good news is this spell does a lot of damage to people who just stand in it, and I suspect they're going to just stand in it. Where's their lord? I want to make sure that our dwarf is shooting at the right target. See the dwellers below rising up to thrash these guys. That's working really well. Uh, We're going to need some healing over on this side, though. Like, immediately. Actually, this front is totally collapsing. I mean, we're trying. We're trying to hold it. We've done some pretty good damage. Alright, we got to wait for his, uh, for his stuff to regen. How is that... Okay, that lord's... He's coming. He's coming along. Uh, we're getting some good shooting done over here. The steam tank is actually, like, totally kicking ass. So up in close range, it continues to fire the main turret, and it is a turret. Unlike a lot of siege weapons, it can fire in multiple directions. And it's also just big and hard and, like, slams into people. God, steam tanks are great. Hopefully you can see why I was so excited to receive them. These guys are actually not engaged in combat. Where do we want to engage them? Do one of these, probably. Uh, the rocket battery managed to get back safely. Not really sure what our best application of Marcus is at this point. I don't think we could hit their lord. He's just like, he's out in the, out in the, in the middle of too many things, this attack. Seems to be sort of a gunpower type, like, straight shot. So I think we'll just have Marcus continue shooting at the backs of these Marauders. And he's doing damage. Yeah, he's, he's doing a lot of damage. Actually, work those guys over real fast. Okay, the steam tank is totally breaking those guys down. Hey, Marcus, you better fire a shot or something there, buddy. You guys want to save him real quick? Marcus is a little slow to move sometimes. Alright, back, back to the Berserkers. Oh, some of our, uh, some of our guys have recovered. Okay, so this is this, this faction completely eliminated from battle. Obviously, we are not ready to go and march on those orcs this turn, but this army has so much replenishment that we'll, uh, we'll fall back to this, this settlement we just stole. We'll be ready to march pretty soon, and I don't think the orcs are going to be able to take Hexawaddle without a lot of prep time. Or a second army. If that second army that looked like it was going west actually turns north and does some real damage, we... Uh, actually turns north, they could do some real damage. We could be in a little bit of trouble then. I mean, as things stand right now, it seems like Hexawaddle's way too busy to come after us, so if we can deal with this uh, this last event army that's sailing north, we can have the secondary army uh, push on the orcs from one, do one direction while Marcus like moves around and hits them from the west. And yeah, we could probably... Have them spread pretty thin pretty quickly here. Also, man, our financial system is, or our situation is so different now. Okay. We've unlocked a Hellblaster War Wagon. Oh, that seems like a fun thing. And a special Hellstorm rocket battery. We're getting all the cool stuff now. I don't even know where we're gonna like where we're gonna put it all. Uh, so what, what skills do we have left here? We don't really have, and we have those halberdiers. What rank are they? Oh, they are capped. Okay. So what would this, this would be for them. Five attack, 15% physical resistance. Definitely interesting. 
And then this is fine. Magic resistance for our basic infantry is actually a really cool idea. And this does give leadership and melee defense to the huntsman. That's something. Or we could just power up uh, we could power up Marcus even further. He's level 26 now. You hit uh, you max out at level 40. So we're not going to be gaining points infinitely. I think we're just going to not bother with the blue line for him. So he could he could take a bunch of this yellow stuff. There is this net ability. Yeah, maybe that's what we do. Let's let's move in that direction. Well done, comrades. Traitors always get found out in here. Uh, you level up and your thing is pretty straightforward. Actually, hmm. Maybe it's not that straightforward. What do I want on you? We could get him some run speed, since he'll never be allowed to ride a horse. <laughs> this might actually be pretty useful in battle. Or, I mean, there's armor, there's melee defense, there's additional HP. Honestly, I kind of like run speed. You gotta get him to the point where he can actually, like, catch people and maneuver. Alright, you can grab extra powder. Plus 10% explosion, I think means... I think that refers to the damage explosion steal. 10% to the normal damage, and then another 10% to the armor piercing. Pretty good when you just put him amidst all the artillery like we've been doing. And we're just going to cap out Dwellers Below, get that nice and cheap. Because you saw how good that spell is. It's just, the, only thing that, the only thing about it that's not great is how extremely expensive it is. Okay, let's finish him off. May as well. Uh, and we're going to manual this... Just because I'm, I'm afraid of losing those uh, those injured troops. We should be able to do this without them getting terribly close. We'll be able to kill Lost Erickson right at the beginning of the battle with a quick executioner. And then they'll take a ton of morale damage from being shelled by artillery. And we, we should see them break pretty quickly. We'll put our melee heroes and the steam tank up front and center to absorb anybody who does get through the initial barrage. And we'll try to keep our actual melee troops out of the battle as much as possible. I'd really, really love to hold on to these guys. Now that we've started to develop them in level, although I guess the melee troops are not... They're not actually very high level. They don't get a lot of kills, usually. Still, for, like, reasons of sentimentality, at least, we should, we should try to keep them alive. Uh, I don't know that it matters terribly where we do this. We should probably back up at least enough that we are at max range of our mortars. Close to max range, I want them to have to run as long as possible. In once, like, that is partially about being able to fire at them as long as possible, but remember that, um, remember that tiredness is a thing. They do actually lose, they lose combat stats having to travel long distances. Alright, let's just stack the heroes across the front here. Like, the heroes are going to absorb a lot of damage. I guess we actually want him... He can be in front, just over here, so he's getting his aura to everybody. And the wizard should not be in front. And I guess you two shouldn't be in front, because you should be closer than in front. Steam tank can go in front, though. Alright, and you guys... Wait back here. We'll see if, we'll see if you're needed at all. All right, let's start the battle with a murder. He missed. Man. <laughs> that skill is pretty all right. Oh no, my hidden units. Okay. Their lord is dead. God, I love using artillery. Let's use the war wagons to try to damage their healthiest units first. Got to enable mo oh, uh, We got to enable don't run mood uh don't run mode which sometimes works occasionally let's 
speed up. Okay, hold on. You guys need to focus a little bit better. Make sure that we're killing all of the units of Berserkers here. I have the steam tank run. Actually, you know what? The steam tank can probably just engage that guy. Uh, put you into run over here mode. And do we want to rebalance our targeting? Probably not. I think our targeting is mostly fine. Rocket battery is not shooting at anyone in particular. We could fix that. And I guess the healthy units of Spears can move up. I was really hoping not to have to get them involved. Uh, mage. Definitely mage time. Let's try an overcast. Somewhere around there. I'm going to use this more as area denial than anything. Please don't run toward the Berserkers. Yeah, I was a little surprised there when my archers decided to run forward. Okay, there goes the battle. And that should be the actual destruction of the faction. Yeah, I really thought I thought we were going to get out of that without having anybody get meleeed at all, but we, it was just barely not enough distance. Marauder champions are tough, man. There's not a ton of compositions that I would be scared of coming out of the Norskins right now, but like this is this is the way for them to build. They needed to have uh, probably a larger number of cavalry. A lot of the way the Norskins deal with uh, deal with difficult threats is using monsters as wrecking balls, and that would be incredibly ineffective against us. Like, if they brought a Frost Dragon or something, Huntsman would put down a Frost, uh, frost Dragon really quickly. Um, but, like, that Marauder Champion. Marauder Champion is probably the single best unit they have against us. I guess if they brought enough dragons and mammoths, we wouldn't be able to shoot them all fast enough? I guess that's a strategy. The scouts shall never fall. On the trail. Alright, the end of Skeggy. Hey, even more armor of fortune. By the Emperor's authority. So march mode back over here real fast. Get ourselves some replenishment. Marcus yeah. <laughs> Look at how much we heal for. Man, I love having good replenishment. Alright, well, this was fun. We met we met some elves, but Andreas should probably come back home. Uh, let's just go for public order for the moment. Yeah, we might be okay on public order, but let's let's not settle for might be. What would be the logistical cost of setting up another lord? In uh, upkeep would increase by 1446 just for creating the army, and then we still have to pay the troops in it. So we're not there yet, but we're getting closer. All right, let's see how bad the movement range on these guys is. All right, this, this is the movement they can achieve by staying in full speed, which is the water equivalent of march mode. So they won't be able to attack us this coming turn, but they'll they'll be upon us the turn after. And this army is a little bit more dangerous. Chameleon Skinks are, uh, they're not super dangerous themselves, but with their fast movement and their poison uh, ranged attack, they can be very good at weakening your units that Tosauruses can tear them apart. And they have an actual Carnosaur. Carnosaurs are pretty badass. We have a lot of... We have a lot of good stuff against large, but Carnosaurs are still pretty scary, and they move fast for a thing their size. Part of the problem that a lot of monsters would have against our army is the slowness. We have we have those um, those big anti-large ranged attacks that we'd be able to put on them for such a long time as they're approaching, but a Carnosaur can get into your ranged really quickly. There are a lot of monsters that are being ridden by people, but I would say the Carnosaur is maybe the premier cavalry type monster. Not in the sense that it is being ridden, but in the in the sense of the way cavalry is used in combat. God, I love Carnosaurs. I wish we could have one. We should send our huntsmen out to try to like capture something alive rather than just filling it with arrows. 
Okay, I don't know what the hell those blue vipers are doing. Oh, interesting. They're going to go in over land. Hmm. Oh, we're at Taskmaster. A little bit of extra movement range. Always welcome. That's interesting, because I that means I don't I don't know where they're going. Let's take a population upgrade here, I guess. Because we wanna we wanna get this to tier three so that we can cap out our armory. The land provides. Yeah, that's really hmm. So we don't have vision of them anymore. Maybe what we do is pull Von Hall from the army and have him go scout. I want more information before I make my uh, my move for the turn. All right, so they're out there. They're tired for the moment. My arrow flies true. Wolfheart's army is not quite back at full health. I'm kind of wondering this? about using Helborg to set a trap. He doesn't have quite the ambush skill. Part of the problem is we don't know which direction they're going to run. I mean, obviously they're going to they're going to run down the road here, clear the forest, but they could move toward either settlement if we had a better idea. I guess here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a normal move with these guys to right here. Maybe maybe to right here. I want to make sure that my zone of control encompasses the whole path so that we're harder to move around. Huntsman General. And then we're going to set Wolfheart nearby in Marcus ambush mode. Wolfheart. Like right here. Marcus Wolfheart. Okay. Huntsman General. So you move you back a little bit. Okay. So now to actually reach this army, they'll have to enter Marcus's zone of control. And hopefully we'll get an ambush with reinforcements, and we will just really tear them uh, tear them the hell apart. And then once we've done that, we can go fight the orcs. I'm, I'm giving the orcs an awful lot of time to build siege towers, which I'm not happy about. But um, this stack of lizard men poses a serious threat to us. Not happy to see that Hexawaddle is successfully expanding. Not much we can do about it, unfortunately, but... That's a, yeah, that's a real bummer. I thought they were on their last legs. I wonder what happened with the Skaven. And then we do have 5,400 gold left, so what do we want to do with all that money? Well, this seems like a pretty natural move. Here at the Mirror Pool, uh, we still need a lot of population. I kind of think, let's, let's build some fields. We're pretty positive on public order. We don't need to mess with that. Um, at some point, it'll make sense to take us out of Festag mode, but I want to get at least two positive public order values before we do that. Up here, we're actually still very negative. I think I might have to build a tap room. Yeah, it's wild how negative we are. Let's also get everybody really drunk. Let's just really focus on getting everybody drunk. We have a lot of corruption. Oh, right, because the chaos corruption coming in from the Dark Elves. There's nothing we can actually do to stop that. I mean, aside from killing the Dark Elves. Oh, actually, we don't even have Dark Elves adjacent to us. Camry are doing a great job of, uh, of taking over this territory, so why are we getting so much Chaos Corruption? This region has 10 points of Chaos Corruption from... Oh, because the ancient city of Quintex is part of this province. Okay, that's bad. We're not in a position to do anything about it, but it's not good for us. Seek out that oh yeah, you should, you should get back in this army. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Huntsman General. Okay, let's see if they fall for our brilliant trap. I assume that they will think it is worth fighting that army in the field, because you know their army has a lot of sources. The auto resolve is going to tell them that they are powerful. Exoatl is still showing up as being militarily pretty weak. Hopefully the Skaven can break whatever scaly tide is happening down there. And Clan Pestilence is still super strong. 
I wonder if it would be at all possible to make a deal with the Skaven. Because if we could get them to be cool with us, then we could maybe focus on our focus our attention northward and just fight Dark Elves for the rest of the campaign. We really haven't done all that much of that over our last few campaigns. I wonder I wonder if those skeletons are at war with the Dark Elves or not. He did not fall for my trap because he is a coward. Tools of judgment ready. <laughs> That's why. It's because he's a coward. All right, beastmen, hordes, etc. Uh, we've done some good work on behalf of Vissenland, and I don't think diverted funds actually harms us at all here. Heightened tensions will do nothing, but we don't have much favor with Ostland. I think let's uh, let's do this one. I don't think that Husband penalty General. is a penalty, and <laughs> I don't think that negatively affects us even a little bit. Okay, um, melee attack. Run speed, melee defense. Let's go for a little bit of run speed. So that should open up Stalker, which is, okay, even better at scouting. And what are we building toward here, really? Slippery, which is fine. Honestly, this his yellow line's not really that good. What else do we have access to? Pools of Judgment. Get a considerable bonus versus large. I don't know that we really need more bonus versus large. Like, our army is already very good at that thing. I guess let's just do this. I would like Stalker. We are the best. <laughs> okay, Marcus. Well, I guess let's just jump these guys. We'll let uh, we'll Ooh, let the other race. dude lead the That's battle. The his melee, his melee troops are first of all in better shape, and secondly, less critical to us pushing forward. forward to victory. Okay, I'm comfortable this just taking the auto resolve on this. For. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we brought superior numbers, and also just a ton of rockets, just a huge number of rockets. Okay, we have destroyed the Children of the Old Ones once more, and I'm, I'm sure we'll have to do it three or four more times before the end of the campaign. Oh, we got a lot of stuff there. Uh, one thing that is definitely worth noting that we got is a uh, a ring of fireball. So we can we can just have any one of our units learn fireball. Any one of our heroes have a fireball. We might want to put that on the paladin just to give him something to do during the early uh, the early run up phase. So lots of hit points, lots of melee attack, lots of armor or charge bonus. We don't use him to charge anything ever, nor do we really have him melee attacking. So I guess what we do we have to spend four points. I guess we take the health and the armor. Honestly, he could use health and armor. A successful it turns out I uh, I sometimes still get him hit <laughs> every, every now and then. Uh, let's grab. More run speed. We're gonna cap that out. Loyal or not, they'd better fight. So she's still not getting anywhere near running out of ammunition. Maybe speed makes sense for her too. Especially like she's she's gonna use it both to charge people and to kite people. I think those both make sense. As applications for that. Uh also, our whole army's just getting faster and faster. Say that this one... Ah, this is a very important level for Karel von Zanger. Arcane Conduit is an incredibly powerful skill. It is a skill you can use any number of times, 90 second cooldown, and it just puts more magic into the pool. Running out of Another spells one? is a thing of the Another past. Trophy. So what do we want to do at this point? In three turns, we'll actually have positive public order, so we don't really need to send this army back to Grey Rock Point. I think we're just we're just sending both of these armies uh, this way, pretty much as fast as possible. Uh, look at the movement difference between them. Marcus's army is so good. So Marcus will absolutely be in position to push these guys off of Hexawaddle next turn. just 
slowly rowing a boat across an ocean from continent to continent going, The corpses. The corpses. Pirates keep running up on him to rob him and just seeing his general demeanor and going, You know what? This isn't worth it. I don't want to have to get close to that guy. Unfortunately, the orc army is large enough that breaking their force at Hexawaddle I don't think is going to necessarily let us run uh, rampant through their lands. I think they still have a pretty decent defensive force. It may turn out that, uh, <laughs> that somehow the Blue Vipers are going to be the most resilient and dangerous enemy of our campaign. You would think that, like, Hexawaddle might be a problem, but... We were able to outsmart them. Not so much with the with the orcs. There was no way around. We had to go through. And let me tell you something. It takes a lot of effort to tunnel through an orc. There's just... There's a lot of orc there. I'll tell you what. I live in fear of... Every time we come around to the Dark Elf part of the, uh, ooh. Oh, they're just gonna go for it. That's interesting. So Griebitz Bootlicka is showing up with a ton of cavalry and some injured dudes. We legitimately could lose this. Alright, I mean, some of you know what's coming. I hate to do this, but we definitely don't have time for a great big siege battle right now. So this very suspenseful moment is where we're gonna have to leave it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time tomorrow for the Siege of Hexawaddle, and we'll see you then.